Father God, again, we bless you. We love your presence. We love your life, Father God. You are the air we're breathing, the life we're living. You are what we seek for. We are here for you. Lord God, just be with us as you always are within the hearts of your people. Speak to us, minister, that we might be edified, that we might grow. We ask and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're in the middle of a series called The Journey of Transformation. The Journey of Transformation. And this message this evening, we're going to look at transformation by the renewing of your mind. Very um, popular verse of scripture, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it speaks to this. And we're going to explore that uh, this evening. So the desired outcomes is number one, we want to understand the relationship between your thinking and your personal transformation. Number two, we want to learn some keys to elevating your thinking so you can think like a champion. Do you want to think like a champion? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get into it. The key verse is Romans 12, um, verses 1 and 2. It says this, King James says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I think I skipped verse one, which says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then verse two follows, and be not conformed to this world. So uh, that lays the foundation for our discussion tonight. Very powerful a uh, verse of scripture. Transformation is the key word, I believe, in those two verses. Transformation. So I looked up the word transformation in Webster's Dictionary, and this is what I found. It says this. It says, a complete or major change in one's appearance or form. That's what Webster says. But in the Greek, in which, which is the language most scholars believe that the New Testament was written in, so Paul perhaps written Greek, um, it uses the word metamorpho. It's a Greek word, which is where we get the word metamorphosis. And if you ever say the word metamorphosis, the first thing that pops in my mind is the caterpillar that forms that cocoon and emerges as a butterfly. And that is exactly the transformation that this verse of scripture is talking about when it talks about being transformed. The second thing I want us to understand is that this transformation, this is not the transformation for unbelievers. This is not for the unsaved. This is a transformation for the believers. So in other words, you spirit filled, born again, new creation, um, image bearers of God be transformed. Mm -hmm. But this, but didn't second Corinthians five and 17, didn't that say, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. It did. But that's, that's the new birth. Mm -hmm. Except the man is born again. He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. That's the new birth. But now the apostle Paul, he's writing to people who are born again, who are new creations, who are image bearers of God. And he's, He's telling us, be transformed, be transformed. Lord spoke this to me um, in the past and he gave me this thought. He said that believers, you know, we who are born again, we need to be born again, again. And I got it when that thought came upon me and the Lord communicates to me in thoughts. Often this is a segue when the Lord is communicating to you, it often comes in the form of thoughts. But this thought hit me. It was powerful because, you know, we expect unbelievers to undergo this radical transformation in their lives. We're expecting them to go away with the old and embrace the new and accept Christ. But we as believers, we cannot display an unwillingness to change and undergo a transformation if we want them to undergo such a major transformation. So we need to be born again, again, and that born again, again, is a picture of the transformation that the Apostle Paul, the author of Romans, has in mind. It's a radical, profound change, but it is a process transformation that we are to go through. 
So why transformation for the born again believers? Why is the Apostle Paul telling us to be transformed? I thought we were born again. I thought we were saved and it's all good. Let's just let's just stay right here and make it to heaven when we die. Here's the issue. Transformation is necessary. It's required because we are in a new kingdom. There's a new life, new customs, new language, new traditions. There's new realities that we have been birthed into. It's a new world that we are in and we have to interact in this new reality that we're in. And the tension and the frustration arises in our lives when we're not in sync. We're not meshing with our new reality. When we're out of sync, we're not synchronized with our new reality. That's where we get frustrated and there's tension, there's stress and all these things because God is saying these things, the preacher is preaching these things, but you know, our thinking is not quite there. So what's needed? Transformation. There's a spiritual transformation that's needed. Social transformation in your interactions with people. There's a transformation even in that aspect of your life. There's an emotional transformation because if our emotions are not healthy and, and healed and whole, God can be speaking things to us, communicating things to us. But guess what's happening? We're filtering them through the pain and the filter of our hurt our emotional pain and uh, blemishes that we're carrying and is coloring what God is communicating to us. So there's an emotional transformation that we need to undergo. There's even a physical transformation that needs to take place. You know, um, a reality of the good news is that there's physical healing for us. Healing for the physical body is part of the good news. Just like you're saved and you're born again, your sins are forgiven. God also says, hey, healing is the children's bread. So there's even a physical transformation. You know, if you're of the mindset that, hey, God has put this sickness and disease on me because this is my burden that I'm to bear, you know, and but when I die and go to heaven, then it's going to be so good. And I'm going to live with this horrible condition that's hurting me and giving me all this pain. You see, it's coloring your perception of God and you need to even undergo a physical transformation. So you see this full spectrum transformation that now we can see is necessary, even in the life of the born again image bearers of, of God. We still need to be transformed. Um, it's a new environment that we're in. We're immersed into. And you got to understand how to relate to this environment. Let me tell you a story that or an, uh, an instance that I experienced. I took some friends out uh, to an upscale restaurant um, when I was living in Michigan. And um, really upscale restaurant where, you know, a, a steak is gonna start at about $42 for your low end steak. It's gonna go all the way up to uh, $72. I paid for one man's steak, his steak was 72 bucks a la carte just by itself. Mm -hmm. So we went to this really upscale restaurant and we're out there and the waiter came to our table, so the first thing he wanted, us, uh, he wanted us to take was our order for drinks. So I ordered my drink, the next person ordered their drink, and they got to one of my friends, and he's like, he's flipping through the menu, he's like, I don't see your drinks. And you know how those upscale restaurants are, he's like, um, uh, what would you like, sir? We, we have it, we'll get it for you. And he just kept flipping, I'm looking for your drinks, I'm trying to find them. And then finally, the waiter, he's kind of getting frustrated. He's like, well, we don't uh, have any drinks in our menu. Uh, you just tell us what you want. And then this friend said, well, tell me, what are, what are all your drinks? And the waiter's kind of like, he's getting more frustrated. My friend's getting frustrated. And then the waiter's like, well, we, we've, we've got Coke. We've got, uh, you know, uh, Coke products and whatever he said. And then finally, he may have even asked for the price. What are the prices? And I, I was like, you know, don't, don't worry about that, man. I, I got it. Well, he finally ordered his drink. But here's the big picture. My friend was in this upscale restaurant with a Cracker Barrel mentality. No offense if you like Cracker Barrel. I love Cracker Barrel. But he had the Cracker Barrel mentality. He is at this upscale restaurant. He's not meshing to this new high-level environment. He's not sinking in. The waiter's getting frustrated. He's getting frustrated because he doesn't understand the rules of engagement. That's kind of a picture or illustration as to how it is when you are birthed into the kingdom of God. It's a new culture, new language, new customs, new environment. 
The Father is looking at you differently, talking to you differently, and you got to get healed in whole where you begin to see it correctly according to your new reality. To be at peace and possess happiness, you have to mesh with your identity. This meshing of our thinking with our reality in Christ, that is the mind renovation that generates the transformation that Romans is talking about. This meshing of the way we think and interact when it comes into sync with our new reality in Christ, then that transformation progressively occurs more and more in our lives. So let's now talk about the process of transformation. Number one, according to verse one, to be positioned, I believe, for this transformation, the first step is an awareness of God's mercy. And it's a total surrender. It's a total surrendering of all of you to God. That's the first step, because verse one says, I beseech you, I, I beg you, I highly intensely implore you and encourage you um, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice or totally surrender to God. I'm begging you, I'm urging you, totally surrender everything to God. But what about this activity I love so much, surrender to God? But what about this thing I like to do Surrender it to God. What about that idol? Surrender it. Everything, just surrender it to God. That's the foundation. You've got to have that foundation in place. And I say you have to have an awareness of God's mercy because it says, I beseech you therefore in the text. And I learned this from the late Derek Prince. He said, whenever you see a therefore in the scripture, you should see what is there for. So if you go back to chapter 11, the Apostle Paul, he's talking about the extraordinary mercy of God that he's displaying on the Jews and on the Gentiles, how he, how he brought the nations or the Gentiles into this covenant along with the Jews. And now the Gentiles are experiencing the benefits of the faith. And it's extraordinary mercy that he's giving the revelation of, and it culminates in verse, or in chapter 12, and he says, in light of this great mercy, therefore I'm urging you, you should totally surrender to God because God is a God of mercy. So you gotta have an awareness of this mercy and that mercy causes or compels you to say, God, I surrender everything that I am. I once met a lady in the community that I was just sharing with, sharing with different people in the community. And you know, she had this certain um, issue that what had, what had a stronghold in her life. And I'm sharing with her the realities of God. And I, I share this truth, I said, I said, you really should surrender everything to God and not be unwilling to release everything. You should be willing to even give that issue up. And I said this, I said, your father, God, Psalm 16 and 11, he has universes of pleasure. He has endless pleasures, but you're holding on to that slither of a pleasure so tightly with an unwillingness to receive all that he has for you. I said, that's kind of puts your, your thing that you're unwilling to surrender. It puts it into perspective. Really in the end, what we're holding on to these idols, these things that we just like, I can't let this go. Compared to what our father has for us is nothing. But the Lord gave me that truth. God has universes of pleasure and we're holding on to a little pebble that we're unwilling to give. So give and totally surrender everything to God. Then you are positioned for this transformation. Number two, you have to have a desire to fulfill God's will in your life. Because when you fulfill your purpose, your destiny, in that process, you will undergo the personal transformation that God has for you. It's in the context of just doing the will of God that you undergo that transfer, transformative work in your life by God's grace. Because it says that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you prove that, that allows you to undergo the transformation. Number three, you have to renew or renovate your thinking. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind having the mind of a champion. Um, Jesus says this regarding the mind. He says, search the scriptures because in them you think, your present way of thinking is that 
uh, you have eternal life through these sacred prophetic writings. But they're actually speaking of me and you're not seeing that. In other words, to undergo, to, to get the revelation of who I am, you must be willing to surrender your present way of thinking and embrace a new way of thinking. So you, you, there's a renovation, there's a letting go or a surrendering of the old way and an embracing of the new way. Uh, Proverbs 4 and 7, it says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom and in all you're getting, get understanding. Then Proverbs also talks about pursuing wisdom and knowledge, pursuing it like a man is pursuing treasure with all of his heart, like the most precious um, stones. And it says, of all the things that can be desired, nothing can be compared. And that's our next point, is you have to really desire to be transformed. You have to really desire to have your mind renewed. And you have to cultivate and develop that desire. When you recognize that, wow, you know, the preacher said this, that God is saying this, but that's, that's not really making sense to me. Cultivate that desire and openness for your mind to be transformed and really go after it. And sometimes it's tough. It's tough to let things go. And you have to have an openness and, and an, a desire to change. You ever met people that are not open to change? You're, you're sharing with them something and, and they're, they're just not hearing it. They're stuck in their way of doing it. And it's kind of frustrating. You're like, I know how to help you out in this issue, but they're just not willing. It's kind of frustrating. Um, so you've got to have an openness to change. And it's tough because we have a before Christ. We have a before that we were a new creation memory that we deal with. And when we're born again into the kingdom of God, our father is saying, OK, you're a king, you're a priest, you're a new creation, your family all these things and it's difficult for us to receive these things he's saying you're sacred you're valuable and we're like me who is god talking who's a preacher talking about that can't be me we're struggling with that but you have to let those things go and embrace the new and one of the keys to letting those things go and embracing the new is when you experience the very power of what God is saying about you. It's one thing to have the information told to you, but when you experience the power of it, it has a different impact on you. You know, it's, it's one thing for someone, you know, think of when you were a kid and your parent or a mentor or someone who has equity in your life, they tell you something and they look you in the eye and they say, you're gonna do it. You're going to make it. I know it's in you. You're going to achieve that goal. And it's not that they said something real profound and deep. It may be quite simple in its content, but because of who it is and the equity they have in your life, it carries a weight and it impacts you and it all it gets into you and you receive it. So what's the ultimate relationship? Who can ultimately speak into your life so you'll ultimately get it? And I submit to you that that's that your father. When your father speaks these realities to you, when he communicates it to you, it cuts so deep. It causes a, a true, authentic, long term, sustainable renewing of your mind to take place. I remember I was living in Huntersville and I remember this very clearly. The Lord, I will say he communicated to me. These were the spontaneous thoughts coming upon me and they carry a presence, they carry a weight. And he communicated to me very clearly that he was my father in such a way where no one can take it from me now. I got a revelation of who God was in my life. He let me know that he was my father. I was not merely something that he just created by snapping his finger on a whim, but that I came from him. I, I was born of God. And I was in tears as the weight of this reality was hitting me. You see, I could have, I, I heard that plenty of times growing up. I heard that you're a child of God. You're a child of, you know, you're, you're one of the sons of God. I heard that plenty of times. But when my father spoke that to me one on one, then the transformation, the renewal of my mind took place. So that's a very important key to the renewing of your mind. And I'll put it this way. You have to allow the Holy Spirit, as you read the scriptures, to play the sacred scriptures to you. 
So it's not an academic reading of the scripture where you're just going to read it and read it. But it's meditating is the language of scripture, meditating upon the word, musing, thinking, pondering the word of God. And in that context, as you're just thinking and pondering the word, your father begins to speak things to you. And when he speaks things to you and places them, them into you, that's when that your mind is renewed. Light comes. So the renewing of your mind is not so much information, but more importantly, it's the impartation. It's the weight of the impartation that God gives you of that word that causes your mind to shift from a lower level of thinking to a higher level of thinking. And when your mind shifts and synchronizes according to who you are in this new reality in Christ, the apostle here is saying transformation take place. It's radical, it's powerful, it's deeply penetrating into your life and it's for all of us.